All right. Uh, Better pfft. not, because uh, I don't have a new game for yep. us. So. No game, no contestants. No no point, I suppose. <laughs> no, Lieutenant. <Yoda. laughs> Here comes the show, everybody, and I'll count it in in three, uh, two, one. No worries, pals. He's too dumb to suspect a thing. Loving familia. Just don't chicken out at the last moment, gentlemen. Oh, right. Lottie just left to go to Moonshade Town. You should follow her. The Morning Stream. I think that'll do. Hey everybody, welcome to TMS. It's the morning stream for October 3rd, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett is here also. Yellow! We had it's a, wedding day! We had a huge discussion pre-show about Brian's wedding he's performing today. Not his wedding, but the wedding yeah. he's performing. And right. um, uh, Just the whole, the whole next 24 hours of everything that is going to be happening and how it's more than one man should, should ever have to do in 24 I, hours. I completely agree, and this is why I encourage so many of you to join our Patreon, not for all the obvious reasons, but one of them is you get these great stories that we tell that you don't get to hear for the rest of the show. So yeah. get in there, guys. Be a part of it. Uh, hey, a couple things here before we get going on a regular Thursday. Um, and part of this Thursday is that uh, my sister will be here later. So we got some important stuff coming down the pipe there. Uh, cool. But I want to play this call I forgot to play yesterday about trademarks. Um, oh, okay. Because we had that whole discussion with um, with Tom, Liker. Or I'm sure with Steven about trademarks. Right. Yeah. Com- superheroes and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, here's what this person says. Hey, guys. I was just listening to uh, TMS 2711, uh, which is interesting number. Um, you guys are talking about trademarks and uh, you mentioned band-aids and yeah they have been you know they, they've been they don't want their they don't want their name genericized as they call it um it got to the point i don't know if you guys remember the band-aid jingle you know i am stuck on band-aid and mm-hmm. band-aid stuck on me well back in like the 80s and stuff you would uh they would put brand after sure. Band Aid, so it's I am stuck on Band Aid brand because Band Aid stuck on yeah. me. Oh. So they, they're trying desperately not to, uh, to have it become genericized, and you know I don't know how it is in 2024. I mean everyone still calls it Band Aids as a generic term, but anyway, I just found I found that interesting. Love the show. I forgot about them adding yeah. that to it. That's true. Brands, yeah, stuck on Band Aid brands because Band Aid stuck on me. me. Wasn't and there was um. Am I am I Mandela? And no, I guess Mandela would be a, a large group of people misremembering this. Am I misremembering that Curad might maybe was like a sister company of Band Aid, and they had they used the same jingle and said, "I'm stuck on Curad." Or am uh, I? Um, let's see. Am I? Uh, I'm looking it up now. I don't. Maybe not. Curad Ouchless Bandages. I forgot these were a thing. You're right. These yeah. Curads. Curad. Curad. Do you know? It sounds like something they put in a Fallout game to cure your rads that you're getting. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah, go get a bottle of yeah, Curad. I, <laughs> I think I am. I think I am misremembering. I think Curad didn't have a song. It's funny though. The top search when I did a Google search for Curad was Curad Band Aids. Yeah, which means oh, that yeah, everyone no, does this. You're just screwed if your brand is so good oh, at having a name. Yeah. You're just screwed. That's how it is. That's right. They were ouchless band aids or out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really funny. Jeez. Yeah, they're, they're let's see, Curad. Oh, you can buy a ton on Amazon still, you but they're still, still get, they yeah. still get listed as band aids everywhere. That's funny. Yeah. I don't wow. know what you do if you're a company and somebody and they've genericized your name. It means you were too good at marketing. That's what that is. Yeah. Yeah. So marketing is double edged sword. The one edge of sword is like, yeah, man, everybody wants to buy our product. <laughs> the other edge is like, oh no, we've been. Oh no, re- everybody just thinks our product name is the name, the general name of the thing. Yeah. Is it? Uh, and I think if if Chuck or Amy is in the chat room, they can confirm this. Or some other people can confirm this. But um, generic use of the word Coke to describe right. any soft drink, soda, yeah, South in the South yeah. a lot down there in the South Southeast, where it's like, uh, hey, you want some? You want a Coke? Oh yeah, I'll take a root beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's how <laughs> it was. Coke, yeah, I'll take a Dr Pepper. That's how it was for my wife growing up. Somebody said Coke, they thought you, you basically would hand them like a Barks or something. They didn't. Yeah, it didn't exactly. even. You wouldn't even ask. You just say, here it is. Right, you just take right. it. I don't know where that came from or why you people did that. That's a weird one. I've always thought that was weird. It is really weird, yeah. But 
in the case of this, it's funny because Band-Aid is also the name of an, uh, <clears throat> of a charitable, giant charitable event that happened. Uh, oh, yeah, right. The, the um, what's it, the Bob Geldof Bob deal. Geldof deal. So that must have made yeah. it worse for them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. they're, they're riffing off a thing that has already been reduced to public common wordage. And now mm -hmm. Bob Geldof comes rolling in and goes, remember me from the wall? Anyway, I want to do this thing. And then they do it. That's crazy. Boomtown rats. Yeah. yeah, no, and the original song, instead of Do They Know It's Christmas, it was going to be I'm Stuck on Band-Aids. <laughs> and it was going to be, you know, Bono having to <laughs> having to sing the first, you know, it's Christmas time. I know it's Paul Young. I know. I know Paul Young did the opening line of Do They Know It's Christmas. It's fine. Someone out there will. They're, they, sting, you stopped them from sting. writing that email, and they Paul it. Young, and uh, I loved that. That was for me more than oh, way um, better we than we are the world. Way, way, way better. better, way better. And it was like every single one of my favorite musicians yeah. and groups representing that damn thing. It's like ah, the Police, ah, Banana Rama, ah, Sting, or I guess Sting's the Police. You too, <laughs> uh, Paul Young. Like everybody that I was listening to the to at the time. Um, Boy George and Culture Club and, and all that. Yeah. It's just uh, so, so, it was such a... Exponentially better than the other one. Yeah, yeah. I agree now, with you. Story, I love the story. Um, oh, the other know, thing's that, fine. the documentary was amazing. Or the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, We Are the World documentary was absolutely amazing. It was really good. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with either of them. My, my main thing, though, is the We Are the World felt pretentious and privileged. Mm -hmm. And the other Band-Aid thing, the Geldof effort, that did not feel that way to it me. Didn't, yeah, it didn't. And then the other big difference, too, was, you know, I didn't care about a third of the performers in We Are the World. It's like, oh, Lionel Richie, okay, I know the guy. Sure, all night long. Hey, that's a great song. All right, mm. boo. Uh, and then you, uh, Diana Ross, okay, great. Yeah, she was great. Love her. Okay. Yeah, but the but one and the ones, you, you, the ones you really like seem like they didn't really want to be there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like Bob, uh, Bob, what's his name? Bob, I can't think of his name. Bob, not Denver. The, the famous Bob. Uh, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. He was. He was just. Yeah. It was. It was less that he didn't want to be there. It was just like, why are you giving me so many words to sing? Yeah. And when he's <laughs> not singing, like, he's just kind of going, "Where am I? Why yeah, am I here?" Right. And Al Jarreau is like, uh, you know, passed out in the corner from drinking, taking a shot every time they complete a lyric. You guys got to see that documentary. It's great. It's really it's good. So good. Yeah. yeah. Was it you that recommended that the first? I think it was. Uh, uh, Might have been Randy. I think. Could have been Randy. Yeah. That was a good watch. Yeah. Oh, and and uh, Huey Lewis, the un, the the underrated star of that thing. Just like, mm. all right, well, uh, Al Jarreau's uh, out. <laughs> Waylon Jennings walked out when when we started saying, you know, that there might be some African chants in the song. Um, we're gonna put you in with uh, Cindy Lauper and uh, someone else, and you've got to hold your own yeah. and actually do an extra couple lines. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's a tall order, and he pulled it off. You yeah. did it. Anyway, yeah, great, great documentary if you haven't seen it. What's it called? I forgot the name. The Greatest Night in Pop Music, I think. That's it, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's not just it's not simply We Are the World colon the story. No, behind but if the you thing. but if you do if you search We Are the World documentary, uh, you'll find it. Yeah, you guys will find it. It's Netflix though. Yeah. So that's where you it can is, start yeah. your search. Uh Brian, you want to eat some pecans? How do you feel about yes. that? Yes. Watch a food. Yeah, Sealed bag of Gilbert pecans. Been waiting for this uh, to show up in my P.O. box. It did yesterday, so we grabbed it last night, brought it home. Oh, look at this. Gilbert Pecan Company. I didn't I didn't yeah. notice this before. There's like a whole... Oh, yeah, um, there's a little brochure. Yeah, a little brochure in there. Texas-shaped... Uh, little gift, uh, gift packages and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. I like that. Oh, look at the family, the founding family. That's Texas as hell, those people. Look at them. <laughs> they really are. They're almost. Um, wow. I don't know. Little little cult going on, maybe. Maybe a yeah. little bit. I think more cowboy yeah. hats would have been good. Just not just more the one. Like everybody wearing a cowboy hat. I think that denotes no, they, that denotes there's a like, fine family right there. Oh, I'm sure they're fine, but it denotes a certain but, patriarchy when only one dude's wearing a hat. That's all I'm. Saying. <laughs> also, uh, that that coat on the kid in the front uh, totally was bought with the intention that he will grow into it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can't see it very well on camera, but I agree 100%. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got these from Greg, whose address is written three times on this sheet. I don't know why. Did you get that? Oh, really? Okay. Did you get one of those? I, I did. I get the same thing, and I, I 
um, shredded the because <laughs> there was there wasn't a like a hey love you guys love the show though yeah, or was there did there. I miss it yeah, I don't think so it was so. just his address so I shredded it yeah but, but it's um, three it repeats the address the first line of the address three times in a row yeah. I don't know why oh funny weird funny but All yeah right. Greg from Texas sent this and uh, because there was a lot of discussion about pecans from Georgia and pecans from from Texas and I think. What we're going to come out of this with is a pre- an appreciation for both. I think so too. Also, I don't like them at all, so this might this oh, might change right. that. That's right. The Georgia pecans for you were just a little too dry flavored, like um, too dry. And yeah, bitter. yeah, yeah, yeah. Too dry and bitter. I want to see if these do any better. Here's the thing about this Gilbert uh, logo. Yeah, this is so familiar to me, and I can't put my finger on why I know this this logo. This oh, name. Really? Oh, I don't know if there's stuff floating around. I think around. it's like, just because it looks. It is a. It is a very typical logo, like uh, it, it uses that that vintage style that people uh, are using right now. So like, you know, there's some coffee roaster out there that's using this kind of like, Gilbert, we've been around for yeah, yeah. These guys are as old as us. Uh, started in Santo, Texas in 1969. Yeah, 69, baby. Woo! But this is like 40s industrial art for their logo. And yeah, stuff. and I kind of like I kind of like that look oh, a lot. I, I do too. That might be why it's familiar because I just like it. Also says yeah. here this product may contain trace amounts of peanuts and or other tree nuts. So you know, mm. beware uh, if you're a peanut hater. All right, here we go. I got to open this shit. <laughs> Or 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 allergic. <laughs> or allergic. That's the important part. Yeah. Forget the hating part. Uh, you might you might hate a peanut, but you're not allergic to it. All right. Why don't this? Right. Oh. I can't get in there. You got to tear off the top first. Yeah. I got that, but the thing wouldn't. Oh, okay. okay. Here we go. Oh, yeah. All right. What do you think? Oh yeah. They are. They are not as dry as the. The pecans I've gotten at the store that are probably intended for cooking and not intended for snacking on. Mm. Um, these are these are great. I will totally eat these without a lot of guilt because they're you know they're a good source of protein. All right, I'll tell you what. As the first person, or as the person here who doesn't like pecans generally, yeah, these aren't bad. Yeah, I mean I'm immediately reminded of the flavor of pecans, so I'm immediately bracing for what I don't like about them. But the tex- sure, the texture's sure. better. It's got a better. They don't follow. They don't follow with a really dry flavor. Mm-mm. And um, these are good. And. I'm, you know what makes me want right now is some chocolate and some caramel so I can make some turtles. Turtles. You like turtles? That's great. I like turtles. That's great. Uh, well, thank you for that. That's awesome. I'm going to eat more of those. Those are good. Yeah, they're really good. Surprise. All right. I don't know why I'm so surprised. I I'm, usually hate them. I'm hoping to have some Georgia pecans. We're going to stop at a Bucky's. it sounds like. So while we're while we're at the Bucky's, I'm going to go pick up a, a thing of um, uh, Georgia pecans. Somebody I uh, follow on TikTok calls it Boosies, and I hate it. It mm-hmm. annoys me. And they live down there. They're like in uh, yeah. Appalachia or something. They're like, we're going to the oh. Boosies. And I'm like, it's not Boosies. Is it's it? Boosies. It's not Boosies, right? <laughs> no. Okay. It is so not the Boosies. Yeah. Why would you be? You're literally from Appalachia. You go to a Bucky's all the time, you, this person I follow. Yeah. And, she, yeah. and she just, she just without, without I don't know if she's just trying to troll people. It I don't think be, so. It might be trying to troll people. Maybe. Yeah. It doesn't seem like she does that for anything else. But she's like, yeah, I'm going to Boosie's. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe locally, like we used to call ZCMI, it was the store here, we used to call it Zikmi because that's what it's spelled. Sure, sure. We, you know, we've called Target Targeta or, um, or Target. Uh, what's another one? Uh, yeah, Tarjay. Right. Yeah. I mean, there, there's we, Mackie, Mickey D's stuff like that. We, you know, mm. put your names like that. If the if the hyphen in Bucky's was between the U and the C, I'd oh. see where she's coming from oh, because you wouldn't you yeah. wouldn't call it Bucky's, right? Bucky's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't call it Bucky's. And then it would make sense that the first two letters would make the boo sound, and the the last three might make the C's sound. So Boosies we should do a contest sometime to see get a just a vote on which of the tms memes is the most lasting and i think the bees oh, the sure. bees guy from ann arbor is probably going to be as close as we get to ultimate like you that's think a so? big yeah. one we get it a lot yeah. i don't like bees that's your original that's your og wow it's there's so many nuances i forget in that too like the little lilt at the end uh-huh. to the oh. bees yep and i also <laughs> and i also hear that song the um Let's see. Can I find the song? Yeah, there it is. This one. Is this it? I don't like bees. I don't like bees. That thing goes on for like three minutes of that. (laughs) 
<laughs> I can, and I can listen to that thing for three minutes. Yeah, it's great. That sounds great. It's I really love, good. I love that. That really low bass line. Oh, man. It's re really, really good. Well, anyway, thank you for this, Greg. You're awesome. We appreciate it. Uh, not, absolutely better than I'm used to when it comes to pecans. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think we grow them here. So whatever we get, we import from somewhere. And we always get the really dry, nasty ones. So uh, I'm yeah. all in on this. Yeah. But I'm, I'm guessing also that when Kim buys them and the ones you've tried, she buys them to put to bake into stuff. And That's true, usually. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it's kind of like how... Cooking wine is not the wine you want to drink. Right. I think the baking pecans are not the pecans you want to snack on. Do you have a friend? Well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe this is, well, whatever. I had a friend. One of the Garys. Gary, we always talk about Big Gary, Little Gary. Big Gary's oh, yeah. the one that put the chicken <laughs> up his butt and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Little Gary used to buy, or no, his mom would have cooking wine. Which was just like you said. You're not meant to drink it. It's there no. For... It's it's got a little bit of salt in it and stuff. It is not. Uh -oh. this is, that is not a wine you you are supposed to drink. Yeah, he yeah. would take like two bottles of this stuff, hide it out in the woods where we lived, near where we lived, <sighs> and he'd sneak out there with his friends and oh, drink God. that and look at his dad's Playboy collection that he also snuck out there. <laughs> He was a weirdo. Man. Oh my God! High on cooking wine and Playboys. Yeah. He's like thirteen doing this, and he became f kind of famous for it. So all the kids are like, <laughs> "Oh, we could go out in the woods and drink and look at naked ladies." Yeah. Those old, those old seventies Playboys where the women look like they're wearing loincloths. Yeah. Right? <laughs> They looked like we all had them. Listen, we all had those issues. They yeah. were uh, ancillary characters in Beastmaster or something like that. <laughs> That's right. You know, who I forgot is in he Beastmaster. Man, he man out of just because he just died, but I I'd forgotten John Amos was in uh, was in oh, Beastmaster. Yeah. yeah, he was great in that. Yeah, the late great John Amos. Oh, they uh, waited like a, a month to announce his death. Like he passed away at the end of August, yeah. and they just announced it two days ago. Yeah, I had an argument with somebody online who said. I said, oh, Jane, because we had just gotten the news on the second, right? So I said, yeah. oh, it's too bad. What a, what a loss uh, in a string of losses lately. And this guy yeah. goes, well, he's such a good actor. He died twice. And he shows me the date, the August <laughs> date. And I said, <laughs> he, yeah, he but was we. acting the first time. <laughs> yeah, I go, well, we just found out today, though. His family didn't say it. No, that's not true. Look at IMDb. And I'm like, okay, let me go dig it up. And I went and immediately, uh, without very much work at all, found a quote that says, his family waited to, to do all their things before they announced yeah. it. And this guy uh, would not shut up. And then when I finally showed him that, he blocked me. Little a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's an absolutely the right way to do it. Let the family grieve and process it without, now we're going to do a two-hour presentation on every performance that john amos gave us by yeah, the way yeah. john amos die hard too for me forever for me will be the i, I wasn't a good times watcher mm. uh wasn't a beastmaster watcher either but uh uh die hard two uh coming for to me, john amos you uh, coming to america one he was great now he was the um, yeah i can't i came to that movie late i came to coming in america late uh, didn't didn't watch it back in the 80s finally watched it uh more recently yeah if you see that feels like one that will hold up better for those who saw it younger. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, didn't, I it, it was like, oh, uh, yeah, I can, I can definitely see why. You like why it. You all like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyway, he, uh, he's, I just really like, every time I saw that dude do anything, I just got excited because he's just such an interesting looking guy. Uh, just a beefy, big old dude. Yeah. He is a dude you did not want to mess with looking at him. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, all right. We got a quick note from Chuck B. Uh, this is uh, Chuck Chuck, e. Chuck Byers. We know him. He calls it. Oh all yeah, the time. we know Chuck Byers. But right. I like the name Chuck B a lot because it sounds like a Timu version of Chuck D, the famous rapper. Rapper. Yeah. Anyway, he says, "Hey TMS, uh, this is Chuck Byers here. First, I wanted to correct you on the name of the hurricane that just swept through the southern states. Uh, it's called Helene. You guys were yeah. adding an A to the end of it. I do that all the time. I think it was mostly me. I don't know why I do it, but I put a Hel I put Helena on there, and I don't know why." I died was too, and I don't know why. It was just out of memory. It was like, oh yeah, Helena. Yeah. It's like how I'm always gonna like. Uh, uh, I'm going to definitely confuse Kurt and Kirk mm -hmm. for this new one. Although we talked enough about Kurt Russell and Kurt Cobain that I probably uh, and Curtis Armstrong. Mm -hmm. I get those. I get Kurt Russell and oh, I'm doing it again. Hold on, Kurt Russell and Michael Douglas for some reason. For their entire careers and my knowledge of either of their careers, uh -huh, I uh -huh. mix them up constantly. Oh, really? Constantly, Brian. 
And and wow. then I'll forget. Like I'll, you'll say, well, wait, who was in Guardians two? And I'll go, oh, well, that was uh, oh shit. And then I'll th- and I know it's Kurt Russell. I know that it's him. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't. His name won't come to me immediately, but Michael Douglas's name is printed on giant red letters in my memory. That's funny. I, I know I've got actors like that too. That um, that I know. Like it's I it, well, it's not the the dark man dude and the oh Larry uh, Drake and um, Larry Drake and uh, yeah and uh, Frost oh. Nixon guy. I can't uh, think of his name now. I can see, but see, you are so dead right to see to to see the similarities there because physically yeah. both dudes look. Like yeah. they could be brothers at least, right? But it's less. I mean, our, our with, when we have these actors that are confusing like that, it's not about that they look the same because Kurt Russell and Mike Douglas don't look at all the same. They both, um, uh, they come from. Uh, don't they come? Did Kurt Russell, who was Kurt Russell's dad, wasn't he an actor as well? Oh, uh, we Mike? got a nepo connection here. Let's see. I don't Is know. There? Maybe not. Russell's dad. Maybe not. Uh, maybe maybe, maybe not. it's some other thing for. Neil Oliver Bing Russell. <laughs> Bing Russell. Oh, he, he was a uh, an actor and Class A minor league baseball club owner. <laughs> that means that acting thing really worked well. <laughs> yeah, and he looks just like his son. Jeez Louise. Does he? Like kind of the same way that Wyatt Russell looks like Kurt? Yeah. Well, the older he got, the less so. But he's yeah, he's in. He was an actor. Okay, yeah, I think but that's fair. Yeah, maybe maybe there was something there that that I was. Uh, thinking about i don't know but uh lots old westerns uh, and military things looks like yeah so. there we're going to come to a point at some point where i say there's my there's my kurt russell and mike Doug, um, uh, michael douglas uh um equivalent because i know i've got them too do you know who's aging better though is michael or excuse me kurt russell uh michael oh, yeah. douglas is starting to look like somebody left a we uh, 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 a tumbleweed uh, out in the yard he's looking real bad i mean no oh, offense he's just yeah. age and things happen and we all age differently but kurt russell looks yep, like a freaking yep. rugged badass right now yeah kurt russell yeah he continues to look rugged and good and yeah handsome and yeah i know yeah mm-hmm. if i was a lady of a certain age yeah i'd be if i was a man i'd even be interested in <laughs> yeah Look, if I was, if, if I, yeah, if you were a man, <laughs> if Brian was a real man, he'd be way into if Kurt Russell. If only I was a man, yeah. I'd be interested in Kurt Russell. All right, speaking of uh, not men, let's talk about a woman in our lives named Christine Fletcher, Scott Fletcher's wife. She wrote in. Yes. This made me laugh. The note about the word spurp. We were trying to find why the hell somebody thought I said spurp on the air. Yeah, did they ever come back to you and provide a... Um... Not yet. Not that person. Okay. All but right. We've had others. Let's see. Did I get another one? Yeah, I did here. Uh, I'll read both of these. So here's what Christine says. She says, thought I would look up spurp. And she spelled it the way I did, S-P-E-R-P. Yeah. But she says, I spelled it with a U instead of the E as an alternate spelling, just to see if it was a word. And then she says, boy howdy, with three shocked faced emojis. I'm afraid to look that up. <laughs> you should be. I go- just Googled it, and uh, oh, you should be uh, very, very afraid. I'm going to look it up. Say, maybe do it with an alternate uh, uh, login, Google right. uh, Chrome login. Spurp. Okay. Uh, okay, spurp. Oh, that's a spur. Hold on. Uh, are you on the, the, the Urban Dictionary? Is that here you're seeing it? Yeah, it's like it's the first thing that comes up when you, when you Google... S-P-U-R-P. S-P-U-R-P. You don't even need to. You don't need to even need to clarify Urban Dictionary. Oh shit! <laughs> all right, never mind. Yep. And that yep. seems uh, consistent all the way down. Like these ten definitions all support the top one. F that. I'm out of there. No more looking there. Yep. And now I uh, can't wait to see what your recommendation, your <laughs> your Amazon recommendations are going to be. Gosh dang it, dude! All right, uh, here's another one. Uh, Spurp in college, 19. 19- this is Bill from Abbotsford. Uh, he says, in college in 1996, I took a marketing class that we needed to create a project. So we created a male spermicide based on pop and we called it spurp. Pop, I assume he means like soda. <laughs> like soda. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we even had, uh. he said, we even had a stuffed mascot made by my friend's grandmother. I have no idea when or why you would have said it on the show, but I needed to text you with this uh, bit of history. And uh, Sorry, a little bit of history. Bill from Abbotsford. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, uh. Quite a chemist we got out there. Uh, yeah. Did it work? That's my question. A little Pepsi spermicide. Jeez. Yeah. I don't think Dr. Ruth was recommending that business. No. I, if I had to guess, she 
she backed out of that deal. She doesn't want to do Yeah, it. probably. Did Can she, I, by the way, yeah, did go you, ahead. Uh, I don't know if you, I, I know you don't watch SNL, but sometimes people send you clips and you watch those. Did you see the Spirit Halloween thing? Oh, no. Is that from this week? No. I haven't seen it's that. It's from this last week. Yeah. Last, this, this last Saturday was the premiere, season premiere of season 50. And um, you'd think I would tune uh, in for that. It's 50, right? You'd think, you'd I know, think that I would see it, it as a massive be, moment and I didn't do it. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be, um, this is going to be a season where they throw everything at the wall, I think, right? Where, um, they're going to have cameos all over the place. They already had Sandberg and Jim Gaffigan and Dana Carvey come on for the, and then Maya Rudolph, of course, come on for the cold open. Mm -hmm. But, uh, anyway, so they did this whole thing and they joke about things that we all joke about with Spirit Halloween, right? The fact that as the seconds after a store closes, you turn back around and there's a Spirit Halloween sign above it, uh, covering up the logo, and and they sell knockoff. You know, instead of it being an, an Oompa Loompa, it's Candy Slave. Oh man, <laughs> costume, wow, that sort of thing. I need it's, to watch it. Great. I should probably go watch it right now, or not now, should, but after you, the show. You, you, yeah, after the show, you should watch it. So they made that that jab at Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween decided to um, slap back at SNL. And uh, and tweeted, <clears throat> we are great at raising things back from the dead. And they've got, you know how somebody had one of those Spirit Halloween costume generator things that would automatically fill in, oh, right. you know, the, the, the yeah. fake deal? Yeah. Uh, like a, basically a costume. Yeah. And then it describes all the features of it. So theirs was, uh, their SNL 50 costume is irrelevant 50-year-old TV show includes dated references, unknown cast members, and shrinking ratings. Oh, I don't know if I would have leaned in quite like that if I were them. No, I, it's like, it, you know, embrace show it. that you can take a joke, Spirit Halloween. Yeah, you, I don't. I think all of the jokes that get made and the memes around Spirit Halloween in, in, have actually increased their business, not lowered it. Yeah, exactly. Embrace and, it. Let it go. And oh, unknown cast members, that's a, that's a problem? Like, Great. Give us some unknown cast members that turn into the next uh, yeah. Dana Carvey, the next David Spade, the next yeah, uh, I have bad news Norm MacDonald. All of those yeah. guys are unheard of until they're heard of. So that's a weird thing to say, you know, like unheard yeah. of cast members. Think of that for a second. Right, the exactly. very ba like the underlying fin fundamental basis of SNL from day one <laughs> right. is that these it's are unknown people who become known. Yeah. That's it. Lame. Now I'm mad at them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now we hate you, Spirit Halloween. Good yeah. job. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to go in there and buy any ghosts or anything. That's it. That's the deal. right. Exactly. Yes. You won't be getting my ten bucks this year. All right. Uh, one more. Uh, let's see. Oh no, that was it. That's Spurp. We did Spurp. Yeah, we covered that. Thanks, Christine. We appreciate it. All right. <laughs> we'll get some news in before the news yeah. is no more. Hey, look, it's time for the news, and it's brought to you by... Brought to you by Coverville, where uh, we're going to focus on the music of The Straw today uh, with songs like, Well, this is breaking my camel's back. No, there's not going to be a Coverville. I ain't got time for that today. No way. Uh, listen, I did the 20th anniversary episode last week. I told everybody I'm taking a week off, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So no Coverville today. Go back and listen to your favorite episode. Yeah. Do a search for your favorite artist and see if I've done a an, a, an episode all about their music. Chances are I have. Yeah. 15, 1,500 episodes of the show probably have done uh, a cover story on, on someone you really, really like. Uh, go check it out. Coverville.com is the place you can find all that. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, go listen to last week's. That was a seminal, you know, talking about SNL 50. What about Coverville yeah, 20? Yeah. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Here's a story about a postal worker. We love those. Yeah. And we, we, and we hear, workers. and we do, and we hear from them occasionally. So we'll probably right. get some follow-up here. These, who brought us these pecans? Oh, yeah. A postal worker. That's right. He found them in somebody's mailbox, stole them, and then... Uh, <laughs> just kidding. He didn't do that. Anyway, a, po a postal worker, and this would definitely not be Greg or anyone else that listens to our show, but anyway, stole uh, over $1.5 million in checks from letters in Missouri, uh, according to the federal, uh, uh, the feds, the FBI. Wow. We don't like this postal worker. We like no. all the other postal workers. 
this one not so much. No, this Jeez. is bad. Uh, $1.5 million in checks went missing from letters in Missouri. Uh, fingerprints tracked back to a 29-year-old postal worker, just a young dude, according mm-hmm. to federal authorities. Anthony Verdu II. Oh, how would the first feel? You know, how does he feel? Someone check You've, him you with brought him. shame upon the entire line of Verdus. Yep. Which is only one line or one uh, layer deep, I guess. <laughs> Ver- verdure, verdure. Is it verdure? Verdure, verdure. V i r d u r e. Yes. Oh yeah, verdure. Anthony Verger. Ver- verdure. 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 Very verdure. demure. Uh, a mail handler for the U.S. Postal Service in St. Louis indicted on three counts of mail theft and one count of wire fraud. Um, I should be charged with that for my. Cables behind my desk over here. You should see it. <laughs> That's a lot of wire fraud going oh, on in my desk. So, oh, I have yeah. so much wire fraud hanging over there. I seriously, I really, legitimately, I've got to, I've got to redo it all because I know mm-hmm. something's something's gonna get pulled out or loose or fray or something, and I'm gonna not be able to find it because it's a freaking rat's nest. I need to get out ahead of it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, indicted. Three counts. Mail theft and one count of wire fraud. U.S. Attorney's Office in the East District of Missouri announced on September 26th. Uh, McClatchy News. McClatchy News. Do you ever go there? Yeah, I did. Oh, McClatchy News, is a that's a company. So it's a lot of um, a lot of uh, papers within the McClatchy. Oh, it's like a group. Um, like a paper McClatchy group. McClatchy group, yeah. Yeah, that's it's more a, common now than ever, I guess. A J, not a JOA. Like Knight Ritter... Who are some of the other big ones? Um, Knight Ritter was a huge one. McClatchy, um, Our the local. Times News Group. Yeah, Our, it's like it's a little like um, affiliate stations now. They're all kind of owned by conglomerates. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's Gannett. good. Yeah, Gannett's a great one. Yeah. I don't think it's a good thing. I think they ought to be a little oh, more really? diverse. Yeah, when you have one company own like fifty things, for example, what's the What's the yeah, but the editorial departments are all independent. This this kind of saved a lot of newspapers in the eighties and nineties because smaller papers in you know sub fifty thousand population towns couldn't afford their own printing press. Right. So having one big company that said, "Cool, uh, you'll be part of our group. Um, we'll help sell ads for you as a as a as a cluster in this area, mm-hmm. and you can use our printing presses. But your editorial departments will still maintain their independence. If they can guarantee that part, then yeah, I'm okay yeah. with it. Yeah, I think that's yeah, yeah. the hard part though, because like this, what's the name of that? Someone in the chat will know this. There's a group here in the U.S. that owns a ton of news stations, and they don't get oh, to keep. Really? They don't get their independent editorialness. They have oh, to. Wow. They have to repeat the company line, and they've got a real bent. Okay. Oh, Sinclair, that's who it is. Sinclair, okay, because like Gannett, Gannett owns or owned uh, a few of the, um, at least one of the Denver stations, and 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 also a bunch of newspapers. They were a media, big media conglomerate. Yeah. Um, but Sinclair, yeah, okay. So there's just a little bit of like trust, and then if they break that, what are you gonna do? If they're a conglomerate. They don't care. They're just in it for the money and the views. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, it says here from November 15th to the April of the, the, of the 11th this year, stole three letters containing checks from the distribution center where he had access to all first-class mail. Uh, pieces of mail were set to go to people in Alton, Illinois, uh, Palatine, Illinois, and St. Louis, respectively, according to court documents. Basically, these are checks that are paying bills or being sent to other people right. because they owe them or whatever. Right. And this dude yeah. is essentially laundering it all, keeping it for himself. One point five million dollars that is insane and how he how it took them that th- took them this long to figure it out you know because it's like oh well what's the common denominator oh they all came from this same mail distribution center great let's you know when you get when you get enough reports i guess it, how long is he doing it for um, uh it doesn't say here it doesn't uh, from say november 15th to oh, april oh, 11th yeah, so yeah. that's a short period of time to have that much go missing and for them for them to take a long time to figure out what the common denominator is. Yeah, I wonder. Like it, it might have something to oh, do with one. the fact that it's St. Louis and you get a lot of throughput from all around the country. So yeah, tracking yeah. who's missing checks from California to Florida, it, I mean, it might take a while. You know, yeah, which yeah, is maybe why I did it. I don't know. Here's my. Pu- I got a good punishment time. idea. If I'm Judge Jerry Von Douchebag in this. Why not? Why not Judge Scott Johnson? It could be that. You know what? I'll be Judge Scott Johnson. I passed the bar years (laughs) ago. I worked as an attorney, a defense attorney, and now I'm a judge. Here's what I would. Here's his has agreed to settle their disputes in our forum. (laughs) Here's Johnson's part. (laughs) Here's here is his uh, here's his uh, his punishment. He has to enter a space that is basically an enclosed front yard, 
and there are 14 Rottweilers on very long <laughs> leashes. <laughs> and he has to like just do the ultimate nightmare get away from the dogs mailman thing. Yeah. I think that's like, good. To- all their pegs are like all stations so that there is the narrowest of narrow yeah. paths that he can walk to get out, but he doesn't know what that path is. Yeah, and he has to in order to fulfill the agreement of his his incarceration. He has yeah. to successfully deliver mail to that door without yeah. getting bit. And if he gets bit, he has to do it again. He has to keep and doing it. And he's barefoot and the the lawn is covered with Legos. Yes, and he has meat he has meat juice on his legs. <laughs> On his feet, he's wearing he's wearing Lady Gaga brand meat pants. Yeah, he's got meat pants on. This yeah, I look. That's great. I, right. I yeah, love it. Yeah. I'd say we need to reform our justice system, and these are some of the things, the changes I'm gonna I'm gonna propose. I am all for um, ridiculously over the top creative punishments. Yeah, <laughs> especially if they match the crime. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that people need to be like shot in the face if they shot someone. Yeah, not in the face. eye for an eye kind of thing. I no, mean, geez, I just want to know. get creative and really torment them. That's what I want to do. Yes, life sentences still should be life sentences, but when you've got like a felony, let's have some fun with that. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's let's do some fun felony work. Shall I guess we? I guess we have current laws that are all about cr- uh, laws against cruel, cruel and unusual, and, unusual, and yeah. this probably is unusual. <sighs> yeah, less cruel, more unusual. unusual. Unusual is such a subjective. Yeah. <laughs> descriptor yeah Ooh, it's unusual yeah i think unusual is good yeah you could argue that a metal toilet in a room with three people is unusual you know what i mean but, that, but <laughs> yeah right. here we go we do it's it certainly not the norm <laughs> yeah. do you have a metal toilet open in what in your living room in your bedroom with uh, no walls around it yeah there you go. like instead of instead of death penalty can we get like a running man kind of thing going again something like that because yeah. yeah, you know if exactly. we're gonna if we're gonna do it. We may as well make it entertaining for the masses. I'm sure this leads to nothing but great things in society. As I as I oh, describe sure. this, it'll uh-huh. be fine for sure. No yeah. problems at all. Uh, all right, over to New York. Get into New York. In New York, it's something something green tomato. What's that song? How's that go? It's a <laughs> New York. It's like Jay Z. I think. Oh oh oh! It's Alicia Keys. Uh, Empire State of Mind. Uh, something, city something. where your dreams are made. Of. Oh, it's not. She's talking about a tomato. Not a green tomato, yeah. Oh, no. That's a shame. Anyway, <laughs> if you can make it there, Brian, you can make it anywhere. And according that's to the right, story, right. uh, you'll make it even better because they have greenlit a rat birth control. Oh, uh, good. They're going to hide plan. it in the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're going to try to curb the city's infestation of, I assume, rats, although the headline could mean infestation of anything. Anyway, yeah. New York's seemingly uh, eternal battle against the rodent population has taken a new twist after a city council-approved plot scheme is set to deploy rat contraceptives in a new effort to curb their booming population. Little condoms. Little teeny condoms. Little teeny <laughs> tiny rat condoms. Yep. You got a couple sizes just in case. That's right. Yeah, a little magnums so that some of them can pretend. Yeah, exactly. Colors, glow in the dark ones, you know, <laughs> trying to make things more fun. Uh, yeah. uh, it says sure. here the Thursday night vote means that uh, in the next few months, pilot programs will begin using ContraPest. Oh, I put a lot of quarters in a ContraPest. Oh, ContraPest. <laughs> yeah. The old Contra, contra code or the uh, what, what, what's code. The, I was going to say, what is the, uh, what is the ContraPest code? <laughs> Up, down, up, down, in, out, in, out. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, ty- <laughs> it's a, it says here, the type of rodent birth control, it will be put in special containers aimed at encouraging the rats to ingest it. Uh, so not sprayed right. or where you and me could no. breathe it in. That's not the idea. I, I right. hope. Special, special containers. So, uh... Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, during or during such monthly inspections the uh, of the pilot program areas, the department will track the amount of rat contraceptives in each rat contraceptive dispenser. That will tell them how much of it is getting ingested by the rats. Uh, the law was inspired by the tragic death of city's beloved but short-lived Flaco the Owl or Flacco. Mm, Fla- Flacco, yeah. Is it Flacco? Flacco, yeah. This is this owl that everybody was, uh, it was the, you know, kind of the let's take our minds off of everything else by focusing on an, uh, an animal in the city. Oh. And then Flacco ran into a a glass uh, side of a building. Oh, he did? It says here he died. Yeah. Dad was found with rat poison in his system. It didn't say Oh, that. really? Oh, I thought uh, I thought he I thought he flew into a window. Yeah, oh. you're right. Oh. Huh. Maybe it was a little of both. Maybe he loaded up on maybe rat poison. A, and went, maybe there was another animal that they did that, that happened to and uh <laughs> It makes sense, right? You got your giant concrete jungle and occasionally a little nature will show up and everybody gets obsessed with it. I get it. Yeah. 
Yeah. New York rat problem is known worldwide. Uh, it's very stereotyped in movies and stuff. Even sparking a mini tourism industry around it with people offering rat tours. Uh, mm -hmm. After becoming known on social media for posting videos of rats swarming through streets and subways. Um, yeah, maybe this uh, will work. Here we go. Here we go. Right here. Flacco, the Eurasian eagle owl who escaped from the Central Park Zoo in 2023, died on February 23rd, 2024, after crashing into a building on West 89th Street in Manhattan. Those bastards have this wrong then. Yeah. The Guardian yeah. But he did have he did have high levels of rat poison in his system and was severing, suffering from a severe pigeon herpes virus at the time of his passing. Uh, severe pigeon herpes virus. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's a dove, basically. Or Flacco, man. Oh, man. That is a, uh, like, wow. High on rat poison, herpes from doing it with skanky pigeons and flying into the side of a building. No that is kidding. Not, That's that is not the way I want to go. No, I don't want herpes. I don't want any herpes. But I've, Any herpes, let alone pigeon herpes. Pigeon herpes. Those are sky rats yeah. anyway. I don't want that. They really are, exactly. Well, anyway, we'll see what they do to solve this problem. In the meantime, let's talk about this story. A woman hospitalized. 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 That was a. That sounded like Trump at a rally, didn't it? Hospitalized. <laughs> They're hospitalizing the women. <laughs> <laughs> They're eating their pets on the way to the, the hospital. Hop We're gonna send them all back to Haitia. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was a JD Vance thing, not a Trump thing. But come on, he would have said it too. Come did, on. Did he say Haitia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. JD Vance said they're gonna send them back to Haitia. Oh, that's brilliant. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I know Biden would say something even dumber, but he ain't running. So, <laughs> right. uh, back to Asia, folks. Asia, listen. And by listen, the way, that was great. That that on the SNL clip I saw proved yeah, that Dana, Dana Carvey, Carvey not only did, so his whole theory about how you capture a, an essence of somebody it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. an exact duplication, but it's like this essence thing. He he yeah. did that again, but he does this thing he's always been so good at, and that is finding. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, kind of making it up, like yeah, creating his own catchphrase. That whole like, you know what? Guess what? Yeah, what, 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 what was it? He goes, you know and what? Look, look, you, you know what? what? Let me here. tell you something. You know what? Yeah, or, exactly. You know what, folks? Or whatever it was. Or guess what? I'm going to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> something like he's I really what the good at was, it. But very good at it. And he does that in a way like he did it with Bush Senior. With uh, not going to do it. Not going to do it. I mean, never said yeah, that. Yeah, every know? one of his his characters that he created for SNL. He brilliant to do that because that's that's what people wanted to hear in successive uh, uh appearances of those characters. Yeah. And it got old eventually, but it can that lasts you a nice long time. Like the church lady saying, Ooh, could it be Satan or whatever? Eventually I don't want to hear that anymore. Because it's right, overdone. Right. But Right. It lasted a long ass time, and if he came back tomorrow and did it, people would scream mm -hmm. and clap when he did it again. It's absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, a woman hospitalized, yeah, hospitalized, yeah, hospitalized, hospitalized uh, after liposuction procedure using an AliExpress dental phlegm suction machine. <laughs> oh, jeez, this is amazing. I love dental this. phlegm. This is this is how you get pigeon herpes. By the way, is from a dental phlegm suction machine. Yeah, don't touch any. If they've been used before, you want to get away. <laughs> uh, woman is in critical care after being subjected to a liposuction performed by an anesthetician who allegedly used a dental phlegm suction machine from AliExpress, basically Timu. Oh, so, wow, so I thought this woman bought it herself. Oh, like self-induced, no. She, yeah, and was like trying to perform trying to perform liposuction on herself with something she bought on AliExpress that's for a whole different purpose. But it was this was like a, a, an aesthetician. Yeah, or, aesthetician. or somebody who claim to be uh so basically it says this they should so she shares this alarming post uh warning people against a certain quote jolene aesthetics aesthetics right a e uh aesthetician or aesthetics yeah so aesthetics yes. okay aesthetics in milton keys uk zoe be careful out there all right <laughs> Uh, in the now viral uh, facebook post louise intended or included a photograph of the device that jolene anderson uh, <laughs> Jolene. Uh, <laughs> That's all I can think of too. Yeah. Don't take my not my man, but my fat. Don't take my, my fat. fat. Don't suck my fat don't out of my butt. Don't suck my fat out of my butt. It'd be an amazing with alternate dental, version with a dental phlegm machine. <laughs> yeah, machine. You've got your dental phlegm machine that you bought on the. Yeah. Oh, I can come up with a quick enough rhyme. Yeah. Look. Well, look. We got a you know film sack. Probably will fix you coming up. 
Yeah, I'll fix it. I'll do it. I'll have it ready for Sunday. Uh, it says here, <laughs> screenshot showed the machine in question with 18 liters per minute airflow electrical portable suction unit, uh, which is sold for a couple of hundred bucks on a Chinese on Chinese online shops like AliExpress. Uh, please do not use Jolene Aesthetics. Jolene Aesthetics and Bletchley. Bletchley. She isn't, quali- <laughs> she, uh, she isn't qualified to train students or carry out any aesthetics. <laughs> so wait, is that wow. aesthetics is the job of pulling your fat out? Is that the yeah? Any like any sort of body shaping? Um, uh, so it really is a th- aesthetics. It's it's aesthetics. the use of that yeah. word. Okay. Yeah. All right. Facial aesthetics. Um, I don't know if like like chemical peels and stuff like that fall into that, but but even like um, like Botox. chin implants and yeah. and cheeks and nose and Botox and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I um on a dare, Kim and her sister <laughs> got uh, Botox once. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Just to see what it was like. That was really funny because I came home, mm. and I'd be like, "All right, give me a smile," and she'd <laughs> smile. Is her forehead mostly right? Yeah, yeah. She's got to give me a smile. Her forehead stays just perfectly still. And so then yeah. I go, give me one of these, like, uh, with your like face. Like a surprise like, oh. look, yeah. yeah right. She couldn't do it. Her head just, like, stayed. It's like, just, mm. <laughs> she didn't do it after that. She thought it was weird. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it's fine. Anyone doing it, no judgment. Do what you got to yeah, do. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Don't exactly. care. You want to put botulism in your face? I'm not here to tell you no. <laughs> All right, no judgment. It, you know, it's a good place to put it, really. Yeah, if you're going to put it somewhere, put it there. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back from this break, my sister Wendy will be here, and we're going to be talking about, and I mean this with all sincerity, aliens. And that's all I know because she said, I want to talk about aliens on the show. I'm not going to tell you why. And I said, all right, I'll just find out when the rest of the world finds out. So I don't You'll, know what this is about. You're going to be about. surprised. She's really just going to be talking about the sequel to Alien. She oh, finally watched it herself. that's it. She that's just it. She's to, like, oh, She Hicks. just wants to talk about Burke and and Hicks and... Uh, yeah, yeah, and the difference between the extended version and the not one and all that. Well, that'll that's be right. great. Uh, that's coming up after this break. But before that, Brian will play us a song in the middle. Yeah, this is uh, an indie. Uh, even uh, big thanks to Grandstand Media. They're another one that that always seems to he seems to send me really good stuff. Lucky Number Records as well. Sunflower Bean is the name of the band. It's a great name for a band. Sunflower Bean. Mm. Um, <laughs> they have a, a brand new EP that they just released. The EP is called Shake. And they've even created a short film that is the length of the EP. So it is like a an extended play music video of all the songs on the ep nice how cool is that that's very cool um this is uh they're a new york city band new york city um and uh uh this is the lead single from the ep it is called teach me to be bad here is sunflower bean big jim the man you never want to mess up with or even know in the first place. You get tasty pasta pies filled with lean, juicy beef in a rich tomato sauce. And we've returned. Tell me about that again. Yeah, that's a band called Sunflower Bean, a three-piece unit that started out in 2013 as a high school uh, high, a bunch of high schoolers putting, getting together and playing music together. Uh, here we are 11 years later, and they're getting ready to release another EP. They've released a, a few albums um, over the course of uh, time. Sunflower Bean getting ready to release their, or I'm sorry, just released their EP, Shake. Uh-huh. This is the middle song on the EP. It's called Teach Me to Be Bad, or it was. was there it was. Word. Is and was. Yeah. And will always be. Was. That's true. We can't change that. No. It's forever. It's locked yeah. in. Here's another Minnesota tradition that's not so easy to throw in the garbage. Well, look what we have here. It's my sister, Wendy, who comes here on Thursdays and does a little therapy Thursday with us. Wendy, hello and welcome. Oh, I don't hear her. Is she muted? I don't hear her either. You might be muted, Wendy. Mute Check your microphone input. Oh, oh, there she is. Hello. Hello. Oh, I heard her for a second. I did too. That wasn't Hello. us. I assume that was her. Okay. Oh, there she is. Oh, I hear. I hear myself too, but it'll probably clear up. Yep, it did. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Hi, welcome. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? Yeah, I'm doing all right. <laughs> good. I've got uh, you know, it's uh, we're staring down the barrel of fall. Uh, uh-huh. 
having a good time. Yeah, turn yeah. it off. Mm-hmm. Just we just need the weather to notice it as well, and and agree that it is fall and to to be fall like weather. Yeah, the Utah the Utah Colorado Rockies area warmth trend is not making any sense to me, but uh, no, whatever. Yeah, that's uh, you guys aren't alone. Mm-hmm. It's been eighty degrees for the last week, and today's finally cooled down. And I'm like, uh, is this real? And then it gets warmer again. That's yeah. not normal here. No. There should be snow on the ground already. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you guys should already be feeling the winter hit a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Not not coming, but, yeah. you know, it gets dark, still does that thing, so that's good. No, that's fun. Sure. <laughs> Getting dark earlier, too. <laughs> so, now it's dark and hot. That's yeah. not good. That's not the right combination. Yeah. Sounds pleasant. Kim's yeah, coming out there in, a, what, a week and a half, a couple of weeks or something like that? To... Oh, that's cool. I'm so excited. I, really, I need to tell her this, but my kids are gone all day. She's going to just be, be with my dog, so I'm hoping she wants to, I don't know, mm. retile my bathroom or something. Yeah, maybe she she's actually painting our basement one that we're trying to finish she's doing that right now as we're doing the show oh wow <laughs> i have a uh, 10 projects for her if she has nothing or she can just come and read and do nothing that's fine but also she can there's plenty of chores <laughs> well she's looking forward to it we're really excited Every, to have her. everyone loves aunt, aunt kim so she'll do great there and um i'm sure yeah. uh, the boys yeah. and, and ali will love come it. On out and do some work in our house for yeah. a change love it <laughs> why not uh Hi, kim. It's exciting, though, because you guys are having a big anniversary, so uh, congrats oh, ahead of time. 25 years, people. Oh, 25. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. Quarter of a yeah. century. That's crazy. I know. It is really crazy. Let me know wow. when you get to 31. Let me know when that happens. Is that okay. what you are? Oh, yeah. you're old. I know, dude. I'm old as hell. Are you kidding me? We're yeah, basically are people listening that are 31. We are. Oh, I, there. I guarantee that. But we are people. We are. Uh, how do I people? We how do I put this? Yeah. Mom is misleading because she's really sharp and with it. You know, she's not like yeah. dopey. She she's got her faculties. Yeah, um, and she's looked way young for a long time, which is unfair. Even I thought that's yeah, even in the face, work. you'd see my mom's face and go, "You're not 86. You're like 65 at most, or something." You see the rest of her and you go, oh, okay, out a few years. But anyway, the point is, <laughs> uh, I think it's it's lulled us into a false sense of of we're still younger than we are. I think Humanity. that's what's going on. Yeah, yeah I don't Agreed. like it. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't uh, either. Wendy's a, a seasoned, we'll say that, uh, therapist. She comes on the show and helps us with real problems that you guys submit to us oftentimes. But today's a little bit different. She gave me a hint as to what it is, but it gave me no description. So Yeah, and yeah. I had vertigo, so I ruined it last time. I was very mm-hmm. ready. Yeah. That was a, um, we think we that was, one? yeah, it was like a Real viral, time. viral case of vertigo or some weird thing, right? Yeah. Just talked to a client who had also had it. I've met someone at my kid's football game who recently had it. I feel like the best form of biological warfare people would be to learn how to massively spread an ear, <laughs> inner ear virus and yeah. give everyone vertigo. Yeah. Jeez. Ooh, don't yeah. give many ideas. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Can you imagine it is, a so whole, a whole army? Of let's say down. the top start best shooting. army in the world, all of a sudden just start going, oh shit, and they just start tumbling on each other, and you can't shoot straight, and oh, what a nightmare! It would be and lots of vomiting. It would be so bad. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So yeah. we made it though, and so I had that prepped and and had a you know whole thing ready, and now so now I'm I'm going to present it today. Okay. okay. So <laughs> there are two parts because in the meantime, I thought of a second one and. The first one might take five minutes, so I thought I'd get out a little time here. <laughs> All right. Um, but, you know, there's great questions to ask at parties. So uh, th- be thinking, when you're with a group of people, what is like a go-to get-to-know-you thing you do or like question you ask or whatever? Mm. So I'll give you a quick one that I think is really fun to okay. ask when people are all at least millennials and up mm-hmm. um, and is to ask them the, about the first concert they ever went to. Mm. Mm. And describe it, like how old they were, where it was. I, I love it because everyone's eyes start to like light up a little bit, right? And yeah. and it's like just a fun nostalgia thing. And Very rarely do people hate their first concert. Do they yeah. say, oh, it was the worst experience of my life? Mm-hmm. Right. Very, or if it some, was. Some people probably have it. I'm sure somebody in the chat room is going to say yes. Oh, yeah, right. Even if it was, that's always a great story, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. Good and story it was regardless. written on a blank slate, too, right? You you'd mm-hmm. maybe never been in a building like that. You'd never smelled marijuana before. Like, there was a lot <laughs> going on with your first concert. Sure. So I think that's really fun. So that's real quick, do you guys have anything like that where you're like, party question, it works every I, time? 
yeah, I, I usually ask, uh, did you grow up around here? Like, uh, because I love it when somebody says where they're from, and I can't do this too much anymore. Mm. <laughs> but they say where they're from, and I say, oh, you're from uh, Greensboro. Yeah, it's the News and Observer. <laughs> they'll be like wow how do you know the newspaper and then we get talking about that sort of yeah thing. you got to travel but, around to all these different places via the newspaper business yeah and that's a great yeah, you know i can see that being a great way to start things because it's a it's a fun way to start a conversation and and then you can you know tell them oh my god i loved i loved greensboro it was such a pretty college town and blah 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 and whatever um and cool. uh, and it's a, a way to break the ice. Uh, less and less usable as more and more newspapers disappear and more mm. and more millennials have zero idea what a newspaper is. Yeah, good point. I thought of that. Okay. Um, I don't know if I have a good one. I think I'm more, um, if I walk into a party or I'm part of a, a get together where I don't know people already, yeah. um, it's usually me trying to over observe them up to whatever okay. point I have to interact. So maybe it's, I heard from somebody that they they work in, I don't know, they, they design uh, lights for the local mall. I don't know, it's some weird thing like that. <laughs> like if I well, know some of this ahead of time, I can say, oh, hey, I've, I've done, I've never, we've never met, but I've been in that mall with those lights before. Like I would do, that's the sort of thing I would do to break the ice and try to do it in a funny way and make them feel sort of at ease or whatever. Yeah. But if yeah. somebody like, asked me, yeah. if somebody asked me like, hey, the concert thing, or if the concert thing came up at all, I yeah. would, you know what I would do every time this involves you, Wendy, I, inv I wedge in that when we went to see Yanni for some reason in the nineties, yeah, early nineties with our parents. And then <laughs> I'm at the time driving a Honda CRX. Now, if anyone knows what the CRX was, it was a tiny two door Honda that had no trunk space. It was just a little two seater thing that we had to sell when Kim got pregnant. Cause it was like, well, you can't have a kid in this car. Um, and we drove that. And at the end of the concert, Wendy says, or we said, hey, who wants to go home with who? Wendy's still in high school. And you said, I'll go with Scott and Kim. And so you went with us. We blew out a tire. <laughs> we had to pull over to the side of the road. At like midnight, it was already terrible getting out of there because parking was so bad back mm -hmm. when Park West was still around. Anyway, hey. um, and Wendy fell asleep somehow folded up into a, a envelope sized person in the back of the CRX. <laughs> so that story would be fun in a situation where I'm like, Oh, they know Wendy. I don't know them. Or somehow we, we've yeah. got these connections. Yeah. So I'm always doing that. There. I don't have like a go-to. It's more like they look like they might be into that guy's wearing a D and D shirt. So he's going to be a nerd. I know what I can do with him or yeah. this lady right. over here. She's uh nonstop showing people pictures of her dog. Well, there's a nice in like mm -hmm. I do. I do that. And I probably do it too much because I get, um, there's a little bit of anxiety to that of like, okay, I gotta make yeah. sure uh, yeah. like that, especially with strangers or people I don't know if it's like listeners and stuff, that's never hard. Cause we have a lot of, they already think they there's already there's already a little bit of a parasocial relationship between us and our listeners, yeah, and right. and a meaningful one like we've already talked to them online or whatever. So we have millions of reasons why that can just simultaneously create conversation. But when you're talking about like legit strangers in a room for the first time, it's it's tricky. Okay, all right. Well, first of all, can I just share how that feels to hear that story? Because I have no memory of blowing out a tire at all. I remember the Yanni concert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it makes sense. I would go home with you and Kim. Yeah. But my first thought is, oh, my gosh, what I wouldn't give to be so not in charge that I could curl up and go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa, mm. well, I cannot remember that feeling. And, rem and a reminder, the back <laughs> of a CRX is not a safe environment for anyone to do yeah. anything. Oh, gosh, no. There's no, there's no yeah. seat belt. There's no strap. There's nothing. You're just curled up back there in the makeshift little storage space that you could maybe fit a cooler if you had to. And... Mm. And you probably don't remember the tire park because you, I think you slept through all that. I might have. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like a dream. I'll go through another. I, I would have a tire blowout again if I could just be sleeping. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Bam. Really, someone needs to sleep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, well, the reason I'm asking the, the, what is the party question that you ask or whatever is because I came up with an amazing party question that I want everyone to use. Yeah. And, I'm going to ask you guys, and then I want to ask people in the chat to kind of just throw in their answers. It's kind of a, a fairly quick thing mm -hmm. um, that they could just say what they would do. I don't know where this came from. It just popped in my head. I don't, I don't have any idea, but I, I love how people respond. <laughs> okay, 
So it's about aliens. Okay. So okay. let's say you have a real, you, you're not high in any way. You are not sleepy in any way. You are not drunk in any way. You are totally like noon in the middle of the day. Noon alert. Okay. Yeah. Noon, is, you right? did figure out the one time of day that I'm none of those things. <laughs> right at noon. Okay. Perfect. Or maybe 8 a.m. Whatever. But you are 100% awake and you have a real um, ex- encounter with aliens. Okay. Yep. You see them. You see them with your own eyes. You do not have your phone because you are working on your mental health and on a walk without your phone. So you cannot film them. You cannot prove it, but you are witnessing them. They're not like maybe touching you or you're interacting with them necessarily, but you have you have come upon this scene and it is legit happening. Um, they can look however you want in your minds. It doesn't matter. Make it up. It's fine. But you really do have an experience, okay? Okay. So what is the first thing you will do when you get back to civilization after your walk? And sort of generally, who's the first person you would tell? What would you do? Would you tell anyone? We're just going to walk through that scenario, and then I'll I'll tell you what happened when I asked my family. It made me laugh so hard. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, so everyone, ask yourself this question. You have no other witnesses, no proof, but you have sure. just witnessed alien life. Mm-hmm. And you're um, not you, you're not grifting. Nefarious. You're not grifting. You're not. You didn't actually. Oh. You really did see this. Is the scenario? Yeah, you right. truly okay. saw this. Right. Eight a.m. Eight a.m. Alertness. Um, yep. I mean, obviously, Tina. Tina would be the first person I tell without a doubt. Um, okay. Because I know that we have an agreement that we believe each other. Okay. <laughs> I like Good. that. I like that a lot. On, any, on anything. Yeah. Um, although I do give her crap sometimes when she says that her. The ghost of her grandfather made some Christmas ornaments move. I, I, and the <laughs> lights on and off. Is that real? I do. Yeah, it's real. I give her a little bit of a hard time, but because uh, it was, it was specifically the, uh, the Christmas ornament that her that she gave her grandfather, and that was the only one on the tree that moved. So, yeah, yeah I say, all right. Well, I believe that you believe it. Yeah, uh, you believe that you. Hey, I like that. That's a great way of doing that. We have a I we have yeah. me and me and Wendy okay. have a relative who thinks they see dead people all the time in their dreams. And now you can say, I believe that you believe it. I yeah, believe that you believe. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So you tell Tina. And Tina would believe you believe that you believe it. Yes. At least yes. at minimum. Okay. She'd ask me and a bunch then, of questions and you know, because I mean She'd it, ask if you had a fever, maybe. Right. She'd like, did you, you know, was it could have been this? Could it have been this other thing? Was it a cyber trek, maybe? <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> anything like that. Yeah. Um, but she would okay. she would believe me. Okay. And then who what happens after that for you? Um wild passionate sexual activity <laughs> oh not I put that. on my my et costume and we'd go at it like rabbits wow um, fantastic uh no i think um i don't think i would go much further than that like i don't know if i would i certainly wouldn't be like all right let's go to uh the news i gotta tell the news about this i, I guess okay the alien it, the, the inner the, the interaction with the aliens was it a positive one? Did I see them like wringing their hands or tw- twiddling their the ends of their mustaches like I'm going to take over the world? Or is it was it just like they fly down, they pick up a piece of trash and fly off kind of thing? Right. Uh, yeah, a, you can make up whatever you think it is. That's okay. If it's a good interaction, then then I'm then I'm probably leaving it there because okay. without but if any they're proof. Threatening- they're like, let's poison the water supply. You'd go tell someone. Oh, I'd go tell somebody and I would just prepare myself from all the movies and TV shows I've seen where where somebody has to do this. Mm. That um, is a, it's I, a very common trope, isn't it, in sci-fi? It really yeah. is. And it's, uh, you know, you have to say, all right, what didn't work for um, Alf's owners? Mm-hmm. What didn't work for Mindy? <laughs> what didn't work for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alf's owners. I love that. Alf's Alf. owners. <laughs> the owners of Alf. Yeah. Okay. I love right. it. Okay. Yeah. I love this so much. All right. So I tell yeah. Tina, and then if I needed to, because of if concerns, a danger, I, right? A I pressing my danger. Research mm. On, on uh, old ABC weekend or Friday, TGI Friday TV shows. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Right. I got you. Okay. Yeah. I like it. All so right. That's so where Scott, I would go. Yeah. Mm. How about you? What would you do? Um, Kim would be the first person I'd tell. Uh, I think that she would probably default to believing me in that way that your supportive spouse believes you no matter what 
to make sure they're supportive. Does that make sense? It's not necessarily a fervent belief that I saw a green-headed alien. It's more her going, okay, well, we'll, okay, we'll deal with this together. Like, that's how it would be. That's her response. And that would only, that would feel artificial. That would feel artificial to me because I think she would mean it, but I know the rest of the world would not have that reaction. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I would question myself like crazy. Mm-hmm. And yes. I would try to look at like, all right, well, it's entirely possible I hallucinated this. And is there a reason I may have hallucinated? I would like backtrack. Did I yeah, did I take course. a medication I shouldn't have? Was that pill supposed to be uh, Tylenol, but instead it was, you know. Tylenol PM. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something weird like that. Um, I would have, I would have all kinds of questions for myself before I would tell people. Now, if Brian's scenario where he said you were told the water supply is about to get poison. Yeah. Um, that would obviously create urgency and Mm -hmm. I would, I would go, here's what I would say. I'd go to an authority who could do something about it. And I would say, I know this is crazy and I know this is going to sound nuts, but I want you to know that I had this experience. You can react to it however you want to. Um, I, I just want to make sure that I have said something before, Anything gets too weird. And then two weeks later, when it does happen, I look forward to the FBI coming to my door, knocking on it and oh, thinking God. I did it because I'm the only one that knew about it. Boy, that'll be fun. <laughs> would, but- the, would the right move here be, you know how um, uh, when you're getting attacked or something, you don't yell. I mean, I, I, the horrible example of this is you don't yell rape, you yell fire because that's what gets people's okay. attention. Mm-hmm. Do you Do you do the equivalent with this and say, I saw, uh, uh, you know, this tall, lanky dude. Um, I don't have any other description because he ran away before I could pull my phone out and get a picture, but he was putting something in the water supply. Like, okay. like you know, you don't even bring aliens into the picture so that it's not a, uh, not even not even a question about that part. It's like, okay, imminent danger. Somebody put something in the water oh, supply. Oh, you know what? That's a good point. I think I might try that because I don't want to... <sighs> the problem is you're going to have to show, like, evidence and... Not evidence, sure. but and like you can describe what somebody looks like and just say, okay, yeah, they were tall and uh, had dark hair and a mustache, and uh, they were wearing a uh, a who t shirt, yes. and uh, yeah, he was wearing a who t shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So essentially, you would, if there was concerns, go just. I would sort leave of like- the alien aspect yeah. out of it, just okay. just to you know solve the problem of the the uh, imminent danger and less about the, by the way, it's also, it's also kind of a safe assumption because the chances are it probably isn't an alien and you are, you are just part of a big ruse to make you think it is. And I would much rather be shocked that it was indeed an alien along with everyone else than be the guy saying it was an alien. Like mm-hmm. I need yeah. more, okay. I need more information. Like, like the critical thinker in me would, that would not be enough. I'd be like, okay. mm-hmm. but remember the scenario is that this is actually an alien. Okay. So the, so I can't, there's no doubt in my mind that it's an alien when yep. I see it. No doubt. I'd still do like Brian and I would try to, I would, I would appeal okay. to people's logic before I would tell them it was an alien. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would lie. So basically. I, <laughs> I asked my kids at dinner. Yeah. The same uh-huh. question. <laughs> and I answered first. And everyone, and I'll tell you my answer afterwards. But okay. everyone was a hundred percent shocked. They, I think, everyone lost all respect for me or something. It was very <laughs> funny because I was like, "Whoa, no one else thinks this way." And so I was interested. Like, how did everyone take it? So Adam said he would tell no one, probably oh, okay. including me. <laughs> wow, oh, really? Not even you? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. He's like, Adam, "I want you thinking I'm crazy, and I can't prove it." And I'm like. Okay. And then I asked Pete, and this is my favorite. He goes, okay, what I would do is go on the internet and I would make a pseudo character. <laughs> I don't know why. You'd create, a, you'd create a sock puppet. Yeah, yeah I could create something and ask people, what would you do if you saw an alien? So he would get. <gasps> is that what you're doing right now, Wendy? Like, is this why you're asking? Because you really did <laughs> oh, see an alien and cons- you want advice on how you'll to see, deal with it? You'll see. Okay. Don't ruin my cover oh, yet. Uh, okay. Oh, shit. So, okay. <laughs> And then I can't remember, Elliot said something about like, well, you know, no one will believe you. And so what you got to do, and like he had kind of a roundabout way, like kind of what you guys are describing. Okay. This is me. I'm the first one to answer. And this is my answer. And then I'd love to hear if anyone has any in the chat. Has anyone written anything down? Uh, We're Uh, getting a few. Yes. A couple people had. Yeah. Icor said, I would still report it with a caveat that I don't expect people to believe me. If it really happened, there might be other reports and mine would help. That's a good I like uh, that one. Don't yes. read Claire's though. Uh, Whatever you no, do. No, Claire Claire would do something horrible. Yeah, to don't read alien that. And, and I think she would get pigeon herpes from it. Yeah. Um, don't go there. Don't go there. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, what yeah, else? I think that's that's about it. I'm scrolling back, and I don't think anybody. Um... For the most part, though, I think the most common answer is similar to like, I already know no one's going to believe this, so I'd have to be careful, kind of protect myself as I do this, or you know that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. I had, I mean, you guys, I'm either the most naive person on earth. <laughs> <laughs> or the most narcissistic. I can't figure it out because right. my first thought is I'd tell everyone. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I thought I'll call Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's yeah. what I'll do. Yeah. I'm and I'll sh- be like, dude, guess what? I saw an alien. Let's talk about it. And mm-hmm. you guys believe me, right? Like it, it would never have crossed my mind to do anything any of you are saying. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It is a little weird because, but also I think that fits with how I know you. You're, you're not a dink I'm around. Lie. You're not I a dink. Lie. Yeah. You're not a dink around at uh, the issue kind of person. Right. You'll go straight to and the. And they can look and, and, and Neil deGrasse Tyson can look at your record and say, oh, you know, she's a, a reputable professional therapist. She's done this. She's done that. She had some weird incident in her, you know, her early years with a curling iron, but still uh, <laughs> that all these, you know, other, other things that point to the fact that she is uh, legit and uh, not crazy. And okay, guess we'll pay attention to what she says. Sure. Yeah. You said curling iron. I think you meant a melting rod of steel that Scott put on my forehead? Means, is that what we're talking solder, about? Soldering iron is what he meant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, soldering, soldering <laughs> iron. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so, in fact, it yeah, is much worse than... Attacked by her brother. Yeah. <laughs> that her brother attack her. Yeah. That, again, not my fault, Neil. Just listen to my story. Um, oh, man. Anyway. So, I thought that was... Funny, I had a, a friend who's a potter, and he would he described that everyone's personality. He you know, he didn't need to do personality tests. He could just have everyone throw a pot, and he would know everything he needed to know about their personality. Wow! <laughs> like, are they perfectionists? Are they quick oh, to anger? Sure. Are they yeah. calm or you know whatever? Or and I a. I was like, yeah. oh, maybe this alien thing only tells about me, and everyone else is normal. Mm. Mm. Um, anyway, I liked it. I thought it was fun. So I like that's my new party question. As I just that's asked, a great people question. What they would do, <laughs> and turns out I'm alone. I was hoping one person would say, "Oh, I'd tell everyone," but I guess that's not going to happen. Yeah, I, no. I I think there are probably other people like you who would immediately, you know, want to get the you know say it for and what probably it is. have and probably which have. Then they learn the hard way that no one believes. Them. Yeah, and then also sometimes those same people could find out later, like. I don't know if it, if you're somebody who gets visited by ghosts, let's or, say. Yeah. Well, it turns out there is a condition. There's a there's a neurological explanation for it if you go and through the channels and get diagnosed. Right. That's a way you can yeah. find out that oh, there these are called night. I forget what they're called. It's like a, they're basically hallucinations brought on by REM sleep. Blah blah blah. Right. And then and then you're like, well, night crap. Night. For 20 years, I've been telling everybody that I can see the dead. And now mm-hmm. I found out that, no, it's just my brain playing tricks on me. My default right. assumption is that our brains are playing tricks on us, that we are not good We are not good witnesses for ourselves sometimes. And True. so that's why I would be very hesitant. Although, you know what? I'll say this. The older I get, the less craps I give. And mm. maybe I would be more like, yeah, I saw an alien, but I can't explain it. And I'll even talk about it on the air. You know what? I probably would do that now that I think about you it. You guarantee would tell everyone yeah, on the air. I think I, I would. Mm, yes. Oh, for sure. Because it be, it's uh, content. It's good content. You know? Great content. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything's mm-hmm. content. Yeah. <laughs> even if I'm wrong, I say wrong things all the time and I get crap for it and we have back and forth about it. But guess what? The show goes on. So I don't feel like it would be that weird for me to right. say, guys, I think I saw an alien last night. You right. know, I think it'd be right. okay. So anyway. This okay, is- so here's my second party trick that I do not recommend, but it is so interesting to watch. And I think I can pull it off because I'm a therapist and people are like, oh, no. Yeah. Don't make a face. She's reading you or something. Um, which, by the way, I never do. I never think about anyone's mental health ever unless they are clearly showing that it's disturbed. Mm-hmm. Minus mm-hmm. that, I just don't think about it unless I'm sitting down and talking to you on purpose. I really don't. I, so I've never I, thought. I always right. wonder about that. I always wonder, we, you know, we got a listener, uh, Cindy, who's a uh, hygienist, and I wonder if she looks at people's teeth when they're talking and says, oh, yeah, he's got some, there's some gingivitis going on or some perio- oh, periodontist yes. disease. Or, or something yeah, like does a on. doctor, does like a back doctor see a scoliosis patient and go, oh, I would have, I'd, I'd, you know what yeah. I'd do. Just meeting at a party talking about aliens, but uh, you might want to get that looked at. <laughs> I want to check. I yeah. think uh, it has to be obvious for most people to want to work after hours during their free time. Truly. Oh, it has to well. be obvious. Um, and then you're like, okay. oh, I can't not see it. 
oh, shoot, you know, <laughs> at least that's how I feel. Good point. Sure. Interesting. Right. So here's my question that I like to ask. I asked and I, I did this with a couple random people I know kind of well. And then one is kind of a new neighbor. <laughs> All right. That was so funny. And that okay, neighbor is Tim Walls. Funny. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Oh, I wish he was my neighbor. He would oh, help me too. fix crap. Oh, oh yeah, he Tim would. Walls. Dude, yeah. you're worried about your projects while Kim's there? You get Tim Walls over there. I know, right. Tim and Kim are at my house. Yeah, right. The Tim and <laughs> Kim By the way, combo. I made a whole bunch of corn dogs. I'm bringing you over a handful. <laughs> It is real. That whole ethos is not a made up thing. It's just I know. Real, I, I love it. I yeah, know. It's I, true. I like it. It's a lot. very true. I, I get so much so much zucchini every spring or summer. It's like, listen, I don't I don't need more. <laughs> zucchini yeah. is the weed of gardening. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So this is the question. Um, you're chatting, you're like, oh and then you say this phrase. <laughs> okay. And you have to fit it in so it makes some sense because it's crazy otherwise. Um, <laughs> but people are talking about their kids. Okay, so I'll give you the context with the neighbor. This actually will help. Sure. So they have one of those, um, you know, those cars that drive, but they're for little kids, like a little Jeep. Oh, or, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's like a miniature right. version. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Sure. And so, you know, when we were kids, anyone who had that was like a millionaire. Yes. Do you guys remember that? Oh, yeah. Totally. Like, I remember that. Yeah. I think it the now. I see a kid with it now and I go, geez, kid, where you get all the money? Uh. 100%. They're, their parents are rich, and then if their ice maker in their fridge works, I was like, you are rolling in dough. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we were talking to the neighbor. Their kids have these, and we were like, ah, so your kids have made made it, you know, just some kind of joke. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, someone gave them to us. And when we were kids, we never, ever thought we'd have this. So we, we were like, yeah, we'll take them. That's so nice. And now we hate them so deeply because it's so scary because the kids will just drive in the road oh, and like – sure. Little neighbor kid came and took it and just took off. This kid's like one foot tall. It's terrifying. Anyway, <laughs> so everyone's like nervous around these cars. So we're talking about, you know, blah, blah, blah. And yep. I said this phrase, which I like to throw in. And I say, well, you know, it's just this interesting concept. We're all just victims of our parents' childhood. Okay. And, all right. And they're yeah. like, oh, because A, if you're a parent, you're like, oh, no. I'm right. victimizing my kid because of my childhood, or you're relating to it because you have been victimized by your parents' childhood. Mm -hmm. So, right. and then it just turns into it like it takes. Well, it takes things from funny to like. <laughs> I don't. I'm not socially experimenting on people. I promise, but I have just been fascinated by the reaction because it's just right on the nose mm -hmm. and it tells you a lot about stuff. So I just said, I don't do any therapy in public and I suddenly just do this. So maybe that's not true. Mm. Um, anyway, so what is your first thought when you hear the phrase that we're all just victims of our parents' childhood? Um, mm. <laughs> I think of it more of the positive, like, like yeah. um, I wanted this as a kid and I never got one. So I'm going to make sure that my son gets one. Like mm. Um, mm. trying to think of a good example, but uh, you know, <laughs> well, a car, yeah, I did have one of those as a kid. I mean, well, well, you one of those, one of, like you're saying, one of those little self driving cars, sure, but more like, uh, oh yeah, no, I loved my first turntable. I'm gonna make sure Tristan gets one of those, even if he doesn't want one. Mm. Yes, and that's exactly how we victimize them with yes. our good childhood. That's the exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. you are gonna, and then we get mad at them when they don't like the the thing that yes. we wanted so much as from our childhood. Yeah, it's like yes. we want. I want you to play football like I played football. It's that whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, totally. Yeah, I get it. Totally, totally. And so it's just been my uh, fun go-to phrase to record scratch at parties. <laughs> yeah. And you, do you the feel aliens like... aliens ones gets everyone happy and excited and very interesting. <laughs> and then the, we're all victims of our parents' childhood is, uh, it, it takes it real deep, real fast, but it's pretty yeah. funny. So I think about that, like, Scott, how are we victims of our parents' childhood? Oh, man. Um, oh, geez. I don't know. I've really thought of that before. Right. Because you'd have to know enough about your parents' childhood. That's right? probably it. I don't know a lot about my parents' childhood now that you say it. Right. I know that my mom was a little competitive with her sisters. I know that uh, my dad's side, he was like the nice, kind of sensitive, kind one, and the rest of them were kind of butts. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's all I know. I know my grandpa on his side was a little abus abusive verbally. And, mm -hmm. um, I know that my grandma on his side was really sweet and gave me soup when I go over there, but I really don't know much else about that. So right. I've never really had to think about this until today. I don't know much about my ch parents' childhoods. That's funny. Right. And here's the thing. You can always work backwards by like, huh, what are some things I experienced that I feel like 
maybe I got from how my parents raised me Mm. and it can be tied back to their childhood. So I have one for you. Mom was raised very, very nervous, right? Her dad was off to war. Uh Um, She thought, you know, when you're young and you have really scary thoughts, no one, she never talked to anyone about Mm -hmm. them, right? So grandma smoked and mom remembers flushing all the cigarettes down the toilet because she thought she was going to die like any minute, like each cigarette would kill her. And so she just had a lot of nervous, but not talking it through. And I think of how that translated to how she parented sometimes with, you know, just being nervous for whatever and how that then comes across with your own experience right so that would be an example so you you'd you'd find you'd work backwards like you're like here's my issue and you're like all right let me move back to my parent because what's i like about it a little bit is that it there is almost some sympathy or empathy for your parents Mm. like oh they were just kids Mm -hmm. having this happen to them right rather than my grown adult parent ruined me when it comes to money Mm. the truth is your parents childhood had a lot to do with their relationship with money that yeah. maybe you know nothing oh, about. For sure. Yeah, and yeah. you you right. just sharing this idea that mom grew up uh, nervous, for lack of a better term, because of all those other things, um, mm-hmm. says a lot about what I do think of my child rearing. And I'm, I don't mean this even in a fully negative way. I just mean that no. mom mom had kind of a shield she would put up. And I never understood why she wouldn't want to just deal with some things just head on. And I, mm-hmm. and that makes more sense talking to you about it now. Um, yeah. I don't know why I've right. never really been privy to that before, but it makes sense to me now. Yeah, totally. And, and you can see like you're the first, her second baby with like five or six dead babies in between. Like yeah. she, you were a fragile piece of life so she was also you know being very nervous about you yeah so, whereas i yeah. ruined thanksgiving dinner she wasn't worried about it um <laughs> that's true okay wendy was born on thanksgiving for those that don't get the reference and uh that meant that uh i think mom was at the hospital while everybody was having thanksgiving dinner i don't know how it went actually she had cooked yeah trust me i hear about it every year um okay <laughs> so all right so brian do you have any of these where you're like aha okay so you have maybe um and it can be positive. I like your your that that response because it's true. You can have a really positive mm-hmm. um, response to your parents' childhood. So often we're like, we want to give our kids what we didn't have, and that ends up maybe spoiling a kid, and they miss out on when they they other things, right? Was, so that can be also, where- yeah, but it was also like a very um, money wise kind of situation because. Right. Um, um, you know, my mom grew up in Hungary. Uh, she, they did not have a lot because of the the Russian occupation. They escaped to, uh, um, America when she was 14 and basically came here with very, very little and had to kind of make do. And so she instilled a lot of that in me mm-hmm. and, and I kind of went both ways on that. Like, I, I think I did a really good job with Tristan making him very responsible about money, but I still... I still did try to spoil him a little bit, like, you know, uh, making sure that, that, uh, you know, we went and saw the new, the new Pixar movies every time they came out or that he had the dinosaur toys he, he always wanted and things like that. And, um, so it kind of worked both ways in the way that my, my mom's upbringing directed the way I treated some of these things, but also the way I not really rebelled against, but wanted mm. to make up for those sorts of things mm. yeah right. i could see that yeah, yeah. Um, definitely a little bit of that in our house too my dad was notoriously yeah. cheap about everything and it's because he grew up with very little and my mom I, I don't know what her situation in that regard was like but it just seemed like they were both children of people who experienced the depression personally totally. and as a mm-hmm. result it it just trickled down and in, in a lot of ways it trickled down straight to me i'm i'm terrible about like if we get amazing service somewhere, Kim's like, oh, we're giving them like 50% or whatever tip, some high tip. <laughs> right, and I'm like, yeah. no, we're not. <laughs> we're not giving them that. That's that's too much money. I'm not doing that. That upsets the balance, I say to her sometimes. And I think that's that bad. she should feel like me because she grew up in a very poor household in Mississippi. She didn't have anything. They shared everything. They all lived in one room. Like, you know, I, I would have thought, but but that was a different, it was a different value in their house, right? Right. Like right. Like, I also think there's, I mean, to just keep analyzing your extended family, um, <laughs> that the the interpretation really matters, mm-hmm. right? Like, 
Um, dad lost a business. Yeah. We had nice things, then we didn't, right? Like there was a loss factor, and humans are really not fans of losing, right? No, we, we don't, don't like we it. We don't do well no. with loss. Whereas Kim, I don't know if they ever had anything, and her dad could literally build whatever he wanted with his own bare hands. It's true. And yeah. so Still can. they made do, and like are, are super, like it went, it went upwards, not fluctuating. And mm-hmm. I think fluctuating creates a very different response in people as – a, as a child too. So I'm guessing Scott, your kids are victims of your childhood in that way mm-hmm. that maybe they're figuring out. Um, in my case, Abe literally, <laughs> this is the problem when you teach your kids to communicate is they, they, they do. Mm-hmm. Um, and Pete's or Elliot, <laughs> what's his name? Abe calls me the other day. He's like, I love everything about college. Thanks for everything. You guys are amazing. You've done so many things, right? There's just like one thing. And I'm like, Oh no, what? And he's like, yeah, I'm so jacked up about money. Yeah. Like I'm I'm weird. Something's wrong. And I'm like, yeah, you're the victim of your parents' childhood. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> both Adam and I, our dads lost their jobs while we were kids. Yeah. And not that, that is the world's worst thing. It's how it was handled. And we never got to say anything or had any power. I would do it very differently if Adam and I lost a job. We would talk to our kids. It would be very different. We could do something differently. Right. I think back in the day, it was just heads down and... Yeah, I don't feel bad. it was right. it was it was a sign of uh, I don't know weakness or something. It was like yeah. socially, a it's moral just different. problem, a moral something. problem. Yeah, in fact, he had people he had people who he liked and trusted who told him he must be living his life wrong. Um, right. I always tell people that story because that same dude lost his business later and ended up committing suicide. So I don't know what that means or what the story is there, but uh, the point is, like, I think you and I have some of that, and Adam obviously because of his situation. There's a knee jerk reaction to pull back and not go full risk and to not like every time someone's like, Hey, you really should hire some full time frog pants person to keep keep everything together. And I'm like, I should, but I'm not Mm -hmm. gonna because Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell anyone that they're fired ever in my life. Oh, God. Yeah, Mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. It happens to a lot of people. I see like, you know, other, let's call them other podcast networks where they got to lay people off or close down or do whatever. And some people even close to us in our circles have had to go through this. And mm-hmm. I just look at it as like, no thanks. I'd rather yeah. wipe myself out physically and mentally than lay that on somebody else. Yeah. yeah. So did you just say the perfect statement for how you're a victim of your parents' child? <laughs> kind of did, yeah. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Right? I think, th- I think so, that's okay, it. Okay, I bring yeah. this up d- definitely to poop on the fun mood of the alien conversation. But also, I think it's a fun one to... <laughs> <laughs> to think about, like, you know, go sit down with your loved ones at dinner tonight and say, like, how are you a victim of your parents' childhood? Yeah. <laughs> or if you saw aliens, what would you do? You get to pick. It'd be interesting. If anyone uh, does experiment, let us know. I would love to hear. Um, I'd love to hear if what? anyone else besides me thinks Neil deGrasse Tyson would like to talk to them immediately. <laughs> that was my first thought. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Wendy, what's great is I'm going to a wedding tonight and I'll actually be able to say, you know, hey, how did your parents' life screw you up? And they'll be able to point to somebody in the room and, and actually point yeah. them out and say, that's the person who messed me up right yep, there. That's yeah, right. You got to remember, it's their childhood that messed you up. I mean, not yeah, the childhood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And Brian is performing this wedding. So he has got, he's got a lot of power there. You know. Oh my gosh, you should do it over the mic. Just be like, hey, real quick oh, question cool. about aliens. <laughs> raise your hand. Yeah. Raise your hand. Like, what would you do if you saw an alien? <laughs> yeah. I wonder how that would go. Raise I your wonder. hand if you tell no one. <laughs> Fairly <laughs> beloved, but really quick. One second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before that, though, can we take care of this wedding? Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. All right. Well, this has given us some food for thought today. Uh, any books you'd like us to read while we're uh, thinking about this, uh, <laughs> how our childhood. No, our parents- I don't have any books for you to read, but I do have an announcement. So no better. You was supposed to start in September. Notice it's October. Um, I have had a lot of different various reasons for that and hiccups. Um, but really the big main reason is that I want it to be really good and it's going to be, and I am, so on the right track right now. I was not in August, so I was like, this is not going to work. Abort mission. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so it's going to be great. So really, January is going to be the secondary, truly official uh, start date. Um, and so things will be coming out in the next month or two that you'll see. And yeah, that's, good. that's I great. I just cool. learned something about myself. Don't think I can do something because I have summer. Summer is not like it was when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. No. It's in fact 10 times harder. So It's also yeah, 10 times shorter. It's sh- so short. Kids think when they get out of school in May and they go, mm-hmm. yeah, summer, dude. 
They have no idea because their time sense is all <laughs> off. So they think that three months is an eternity of good times. Yeah, totally. Not, yeah, It is so short. It is five seconds or less. I hate yeah. it. I want and that every feeling. year growing up. It gets shorter and shorter and it shorter. It really does. Do you we have, do we should do that. an episode on that right. because I want to reverse that in my own head if I can do it somehow. Like I want a month. Yeah, just I know, I know how you can. Okay. <laughs> all right. Because yeah, it's already the 3rd of October, because, and last time I looked, it was like July, so help me now. I know. It's crazy. Actually, that would be a great email. If someone could write in about their experience with time being warped in any direction. It doesn't even have to be that it's compressed and goes faster. It could be, like, for example, if I was writing in, I'd say, hey, I had vertigo, and I laid still for eight hours, and I wasn't bored for one minute, and I'll tell you why, because if I moved my head. <laughs> yeah. Bruh. I've never focused mm. so much on the moment in my life because mm. it was the one way to not feel sick. Mm -hmm. And time flew by, but also was very zen in weird ways. Anyway, because it's about attention. So anyway, I don't want to give away the all the, the secrets yet, but just Ooh. anyone have a thing, they can like just their experience um, where this is like melted their brain, how quick time goes and then the, why it was so... Yeah, that kind of thing. Give the email okay. address and uh, people will, will send something in. Oh, yeah. Uh, do it to the morning stream at gmail.com, everybody. And if you'd rather text at 801 462 And if you want to stay anonymous in both those formats, not a problem. We don't, we never yeah. use names if you don't want us to. Okay. Uh, Wendy, I hope you have a great week and uh, yeah. may all your alien discussions be white. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, have a good one. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right. I really cool. don't know what that meant, so I don't know why I said it. Uh, hey, guess what? Shows are coming up. We do not have a Coverville today, but do, reminder, do go back and listen to the 20-year uh, episode. Yeah. That's awesome. Huge landmark. Great place to, to get in there, and then go back and listen to everything else Brian's ever done. All right? There you go. Do that. <laughs> tuck uh, in. <laughs> yeah, tuck in. It's only 1,500 episodes. You'll be fine. Uh, core is tonight. Four p uh, Sorry, 5 p.m. is when we start that show. Uh, 5 p.m. Mountain Time. That'll change soon in November when we the clocks flip. But uh, right now it's still at five, and uh, we got a lot to talk about. So join me, Bo, and John for a big video game party. Uh, that's Core uh, Frogpants.com/slash/Core. Play Retro is not happening this week because Dunaway is also leaving to come meet with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so he will yeah. not be uh, able to do that. Plus, his internet is still screwy, even though he got power. We're gonna back. really play play some retro while instead of him doing the show called Play Retro. Yeah, maybe he'll film some of that, and we'll. You know, we could make it an there episode. I don't know. Something Perfect. like that. Uh, and then Film Sack this weekend is indeed happening. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. You may know it as four or Return of. Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But we're calling it TNG because that's stupid, you know? It's really dumb. And it's got your uh, Renee Zellweger and your Matthew McConaughey in it. Early mm -hmm. roles for both of them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, big deal for them. All right, all right, all right. Oscar winners both. And uh, yeah. somehow yeah. in this movie, uh, it's it's pretty weird. Anyway, we recorded this. It's already up, uh, or it's already uh, it already exists, but it won't be posted till this weekend. So watch for that and get ready for Sacktober because that is what kicks it off. Uh, you got anything else, Brian? Before we uh, head out, are we done? I got nothing else. All right, I'm spent. <laughs> you guys at home, uh, or you guys at the Southeast Meetup, have a fantastic time. Be safe getting where you got to oh, get. Yeah. All that stuff, everybody in Savannah, everybody uh, coming in uh, from other places, be safe and uh, enjoy and, uh, Brian while you have yeah. it. And follow me on threads if you want to see. I'll, I'll post some photos of the wedding and me in my suit and lavalier mic'd up and all that stuff uh, before before the ceremony and maybe if I can during the ceremony. <laughs> yeah. We never talk about this, but we mostly post on threads now, Brian and I. Yeah. So if you yeah. want to find him, he's Coverville. You want to find me, I'm Actual Scott on there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's my instagram name so that's why it's dumb mm -hmm. uh but anyway <laughs> we uh we like threads more than we like x so if you want to follow our daily musings and uh, also keep track of him over the weekend that's the place to do it uh that go. is it frogpants.com slash tms for all else and uh let's leave them now with a song in their hearts and their minds yeah this comes from joe acosta frequent uh frequent uh, person in the tadpole and and email and text and discord all that greetings scott and brian on May 7th, 2024, I was diagnosed with a rare and aggressive form of stomach cancer. Mm. Not so rare, thankfully, that it's being named after me, but rare enough to be a headache. On October 4th, 2024, I'm having a full gastrectomy to confirm that the cancer has not spread beyond my stomach and hopefully put this phase of treatment to rest. Good luck, Joe. We are Ugh. all sending 
um, positive vibes towards it. Yeah, I way. hate, this is such a common name in our community. We see him all the time, hear from him all the time, yeah. and to hear this is happening to him just guts me. I hate it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, this may sound silly, but my stomach has been a best friend to me my entire life. My love of food motivated me to study culinary arts in my 20s after already having a career in IT. Food has also been a conduit for meeting new people. Such was the case last October when I had the privilege to dine with, with me and Tina here in Denver. Aww. I'd like to dedicate uh, thanks for the memory to my belly for all the fun we've had together. <laughs> I'm especially fond of the Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass version, which I think has played a role as background music on TMS. If this version is not available for some reason, perhaps a cover of Eat It. I leave it in your capable cover master hands, signed Joe Acosta. Uh, Joe, uh, obviously, yeah, we are we are thinking about you and pulling for you, and I want to hear from you as soon as things go well, and let me know that you're... you're um, you're recovering and that uh, that they indeed got uh, all of it out with good margins. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, yeah, you've heard this song on TMS a lot. I don't know I don't know if you use, use it if you've used it recently, but uh, thanks for the memory by Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass comes from the album The Beat of the Brass from 1968. It's a great cover. Here is Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. All right, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, Brian will be back, probably have some stories in tow. I will hopefully have stories. Yeah. yeah, it'll be great. So come on back. We'll see you then. Whoops, wrong one. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Isn't there a nut from Brazil called Brazil something? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't know who you were. Uh. But-